focus then but I am okay so we're gonna just have a quick look at bacterial structures and their classification by shape so again this is a little bit of sort of synoptic because we did um, prokaryotes in core concepts and in component 2 of course we were sort of you know slightly obsessed with plasmids so, prokaryote structure, what are we looking at? We're looking at bacteria, they're dead easy to draw, so we've got a cell membrane with its little infoldings. Called the mesosome. Around the outside of that we've got a cell wall. I'm going to do that in purple because it's not made of... Um, cellulose, it's made of peptidoglycan. And inside we've got a nucleoid which is a tangled loop of DNA. And of course the one thing that you all remember is that studded around inside we've got ribosomes. So these ribosomes are 70S. Their job of course is protein synthesis. And this is kind of, you know, this is the basic model of a prokaryote. And that includes all members of the kingdom prokaryote and the, uh, sorry, the domain um, eubacter and the archaeobacter. So this is the cell membrane. And it's a bilayer. Phospholipids, so it's got exactly the same membrane structure that our cells have. Just the same function. Um, we've got the mesosome. Which does respiration. And we've got our nucleoid. Which just describes the region where we find the DNA that codes to the basic bacterium. We've got the cell wall which contains peptidoglycan And of course, that, everything inside the cell is floating about in cytoplasm. Now in addition to that, obviously we've got some optional extras, just like you know when you buy your first car and they'll say, ooh, do you want a sunroof? Yeah, that'll be another empty billion pounds. Ooh, do you want air conditioning, radio, mats? posh hubcaps, all the rest of it, optional extras. So in addition, so all my optional extras are going in as in red, we've got plasmids, those extra circles, small circles of DNA with additional genes on. Some of them may have an extra layer around the outside called the slime capsule, which has a kind of a protective function against desiccation and um, against the immune systems. They may have a flagellum. But those are not universal features. All bacteria have the ones that I've done in felt tip and then these are optional extras. 
And of course in Unit 2 we were very obsessed with these plasmids which we're using now because we know about you know, more about stuff, we're using them in genetic engineering. So, how do we sort bacteria out? There are millions and millions and millions of bacteria and the primary sort of categorisation of them is by shape. So a microbiologist sort of first line for identification is to shove a bacterium under a microscope and have a look at it and see what shape it is. And they are categorised into um, three basic groups. So we've got the bacilli, that's the plural, the bacillus. Um, is the singular. These are rod shaped and are generally drawn as a little oblong. We also have my all time favourite, the cocci, um, and again, singular coccus. Now, these are not circular, uh, as it says on Wikipedia, because although I would draw that ball as that, that ball happens to be a sphere. So these are spherical bacteria. And then we have the choosing colours now. We've got the spirillum, which are spiral or helix shaped, like your telephone wire. Uh, drawing them a bit trickier. That's my version of a spiral. I was in an exam, I kind of colour that in to make it look more spirally. So, um, how do you know what sort of bacteria you've been asked, asked about? Quite a lot of them have clues in their names. So, uh, for example, if you get something that is called helico, That's a dead giveaway. The Spiro Kitty is a dead giveaway that you're looking at spiral bacteria. Obligingly, quite a lot of the uh, cocci actually have it as part of their name. So we have stuff like Streptococcus, we have Staphylo. Coccus. If it's got coccus in its name, that's a dead giveaway that you're looking at one of these ones. Um, and then the bacilli, they'll very often tell you that this is a bacillus uh, bacteria. I think I've spot bacillus wrong actually, I think it's only one. So a bacillus, yeah that looks better. Bacillus, they'll tell you that it's a bacillus and the most common one I think that you'll come across is E. coli, which is short for Escherichia coli. It's one of our most ubiquitous uh, bacteria in the body, so uh, quite common and quite often used in science, proper science. <laughs>